All right, a lot of ACC fans perceive their teams to be worthy of an SEC or a Big Ten invite, probably a lot more than the actual number justify. I've got Drake Toll from Locked On Big 12, and we're going to talk today about conference realignment from a little bit different perspective. But if you could tell maybe some of those fans of teams who maybe don't deserve to be in the Big Ten or the SEC, what is the conference realignment perspective from the Big T Big 12's perspective right now? Yeah, well, first and foremost, JT, if you're NC State, if you're Louisville, if you're Pitt, even if you're maybe Miami, who seems to be the bell cow for the Big 12, it's who they really want to go after. I, I want to start by saying I'm sorry. If your aspirations <laughs> are to go to the Big 10 or to go to the SEC, and I would hope that those fan bases and those fans have enough wherewithal to know that that's not going to happen, that they do not. The valuation of that university or a football program, and football is the one that pushes the needle here, is not going to be enough to, to push you over. If you are Duke, I, I've heard so many Duke fans that are screaming, you know, this is it, we can get to the Big 10 because basketball is so good. And academically, we're so good, but... It doesn't exactly work that way when football is bringing in the bulk of the money by a large margin, a margin large enough that no matter how good your basketball team is, if football is not picking up the slack consistently, you get left behind. And if you're a Big 12, you're Brett Yormark, you just added Utah, Colorado, Arizona, Arizona State. Those are the brands you want to stick around with, each of them being better than the UCF, Cincinnati, Houston, BYU you brought in before. There's a new caliber of team coming into the Big 12, and the idea is not, hey, let's save Syracuse. Let's save Boston College. The Big 12 is a business before it is a life raft. We're not just out here trying to save everybody in the Pac-12 or the ACC, and that's the reason the Washington State and Oregon State went away. There will be some Washington States and Oregon States in the ACC, and for those middle-of-the-pack teams, for your Louisville, for your Pitt, you best hope the Big 12 calls because the SEC and the Big 10, they, they won't. It's got to be the most disheartening for you. You mentioned them specifically, and, and I, I talked on your show about this. People can find yeah. your show at Locked On Big 12. Uh, I think Miami is deserving of a Big 2 invite. Even as yep. a Florida State guy who gives them a really hard time, at, at, I, I do think they are. I think that brand is big enough. But to me, they would be the program that it would be the most disheartening. Now, Louisville, Pittsburgh, they got to realize they're like, they, they got to know, yeah. right? Like, they, they got to realize it. But if Miami ends up there, maybe Virginia. Those could, which I think Virginia goes big too as well. Those yeah. would be the teams I think it would hurt the most. I don't think it's going to hurt Syracuse to or Wake Forest or Georgia to, to end up in the. I think maybe some of those teams would be a blessing, but yeah. I don't think it's going to hurt Pittsburgh to end up there. I think it would hurt Miami pretty bad. Miami is is still the one that feels in the almost a college football purgatory. What do we do with you? And if we're having this conversation in even two thousand and five. It's a no-brainer. Miami's in the Big Two. They're an SEC. They're a Big Ten team. And that's where Clemson feels like they are right now. Clemson won at the right time. 15 years ago, nobody cared about Clemson. Their athletic revenue was not great. Their football revenue was middle of the pack at best in the Power Five. Today, because of their college football playoff success, their valuation from the CFP has placed them in a position to go to the SEC of the Big Ten. They are a Big Two school. Miami's issue is their last 20 or so years have not been relevant enough. Not irrelevant altogether, but not relevant enough to warrant that call from the SEC or the Big Ten, or to be at least a piece those two leagues are chomping at the bit to get. There is an aggressive approach from major conferences to get Florida State. That is a program that you want. That is a revenue stream, a fan base, a footprint that you want. It doesn't exist that way for Miami, and that's why I feel like as the SEC and Big Ten murmurs of them, them who they value, what they value come out, they want regionality. They want the footprint. They want even the academic prowess, the AAU status, the Big Ten that a Virginia can give you. And if that is the case, they're going to put North Carolina and the Jordan brand over Miami. They're going to put Virginia or, or maybe a Virginia Tech, if those two are looped together, over what they could get for Miami. And wasn't that case 20 years ago. But today, it's not how many games you win in football, how many games you lose, unless you're at the very top level like Clemson. And for Miami, they just don't have that enough to be desirable like they want. Yeah, I think their market could help them. I think if, you know, the Big Ten wanting to get into Florida could help Miami a lot. I, I think that um, I do think there's still a national brand, right? Like, and I don't oh, mean yeah. to compare them to this team, but like the, you know, like there are Yankees fans everywhere. They're not mm -hmm. that big, right? There are Cowboys fans everywhere, Lakers fans everywhere. 
And uh, ironically, they all cheer for that team too. But uh, I think that uh, I think that could help Miami, like the national, like, like the national brand, the the location of Miami. But yeah, like they're yeah. they're an on the fence team. What teams right now? If the ACC collapsed, we've talked about some scenarios where the ACC could just fall off a cliff if a few yeah. teams uh, bolt here soon. What teams outside of your Florida State, Clemson, obviously right. would have an invite? What teams would have an automatic invite to the Big Twelve? I still don't think that Virginia and North Carolina are on the table for the Big 12. I assume they will both have enough to get into the Big 10 and the SEC. Then again, we talked about legislation from the state level of will Virginia Tech and NC State have to follow. I believe the answer is no. In the same way that people always talk about, well, th this team can't get into the Big 10. They don't have AAU distinction. Money will trump that in the end. If your athletic revenue is enough, it will trump any academic distinction to get into that conference. And if money is enough, it will trump the idea that NC State has to follow North Carolina. So I'm going to branch off Virginia Tech and NC State from their two major institutions and say that those two are pretty squarely in the list for the Big 12. The wish list certainly includes Louisville. When football is good at Louisville and basketball, no matter good or bad, is usually profitable with the best in the country, that is a very, very desirable athletic department. They can be top 25 in the country in, in total revenue or total budget any given year that football is okay to good. They have become that because of what the ACC has given them in the last decade. Uh, then there's Pitt. You have the regional rivalry with West Virginia. I still think they're on the low end of the list of what the Big 12 would want, but they're right there. I've heard Georgia Tech being another one that everybody has circled as, hey, this is a good Big 12 option because the likelihood of them getting into the Power 2 is not great. Uh, and again, the, the one that I circle, that the Big 12 circles, if Brett Yormark is going to close the gap between the Big 12 and the SEC and Big 10, Miami has to be in this conversation as a Big 12 school. If you can do that, if you can bring them in, if you can boost up Utah, look, if Utah wins the college football playoff championship next season, the whole conversation changes. The 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 PR that comes from that, much less the revenue that comes from that that we saw from TCU even making it, is going to to take this conference to the moon. So what you need is a competitive team like a Miami at their best in football to build back the the gap, the bridge that has been constructed between the Big 12 and pretty much everybody else at the top. So there's your West list. Miami being number one, Pitt, Georgia Tech there at the bottom, and your NC State's Virginia Techs, and specifically Louisville falling there in the middle. How would additions of some of those HCC teams like NC State in, in North Carolina, Miami and South Florida, Virginia Tech up there near the DMV, Georgia Tech yeah. and Atlanta, how does that impact recruiting battles in some of those talent-rich states? What's so interesting about that question is we don't know yet, and there's not a good enough way to know because of what we just learned about UCF. I was waiting to see, is a Power 4 distinction – going to push UCF recruiting over the edge? And the answer was yes. They've recruited with some of the best in the Big in the Big 12. They've gone out and taken recruits away from schools like Florida, schools like Miami. And so if UCF can do that because of where they are in a conference position, could an NC State go win a battle against a UCF? That's a, that's a regional rivalry right there compared to where everybody else in the Big 12 is, kind of more in the heartland section of the country. Then you're asking Virginia Tech to go down to Florida and win some recruiting battles against UCF. I think more than anything, the, the Knights are, are chomping at the bit to bring in some of those East Coast teams and start building those battles. West Virginia is saying the same thing. Those two schools would value themselves over an NC State or Virginia Tech as of today in 2024. And so what you do create is a battle for the East Coast, but a battle that doesn't involve the SEC and the Big Ten because if you look at just the brand itself, you have football players saying, I want to play in the SEC. I want to play in the SEC. Turning that down for an NC State because they're in the Big 12, I just don't know if we're ever going to see that. Yeah. Um, UCF is such an interesting one to me oh, as, a, yeah. as a newer program that they've always been thought of as like the little brother. In fact, they were even behind USF at one point. Yeah. Um, they said they, they won at the right time, but if conference realignment would have happened 10 years ago, it, it would have been USF. Uh, when they were winning 10 plus games a year um, that, that would be in the big 12 now, but UCF is such an interesting one to me. Um, 
because of where they're located, man. And, yeah. and, and even if they're not able to recruit with the Florida States and the Floridas and the Miamis, if they can only pick off one from each of those classes every year, right. which they have, they've, they've, they're largely still recruiting the the scraps or the leftovers. The leftovers mm-hmm. in the state of Florida are still yeah. really yeah. freaking good, like really good. And and they could be a force, I think, in the Big Twelve for a long time. And and so they're they're a they're a very interesting kind of case study to me. They've done a good job at that Group of Five level, and now they've got that infusion of funds. They're the largest uh, alumni base in the state, and they're growing yep. that. Uh, pretty rapidly with how massive of a university they are. They've got all the space and land in the world. And so they're a young, they're younger. And so it's going to take time. Right. I don't think they're going to win three national titles in the next 10 years or anything like that to catch up with the big dogs. But I, I think that they've got a really big chance there in, in, in the big 12 to close that gap a little bit. Well, look at Iowa state, look at, at Kansas state, Manhattan, Kansas, Ames, Iowa. Uh, I mean, I, I, me, I'm from Jessup, Georgia. I'm a left tackle. I get an offer to go play in Orlando or in Ames, Iowa. And look, Ames, Iowa is a great college town if you like beer and the cold. But, buddy, I like palm trees and the sun. I can tell you where I'm going. They so got beer in Orlando, too. They, they got beer. They got some harder <laughs> stuff in Orlando for me if I really want it. So as as from that perspective, and I know that's not it, – it's semantics that doesn't apply to every recruit. But for anybody that's in the southeast, that's – typically where you look and we're still having conversations college football coaches with recruits of when can i play on tv do i get to play on tv every saturday can my parents watch me are we going to play if if i'm from georgia could we play georgia tech could we play somewhere that's close enough that I, my extended family could come those questions are still happening in recruiting it's not solely in il so with that UCF has a distinct advantage over everybody else in the conference for being in Florida. There are multiple Big 12 teams in Texas that are all competing with each other. Baylor can't go into Houston's backyard anymore and take a a recruit by saying, oh, there are no Power 5 teams here. That doesn't exist now. Houston's in the Big 12. Texas Tech out in Lubbock. They have to leave Lubbock because there are no football players there and go down to the DFW area and try to grab guys. They're constantly in battles with one another. At UCF, you say, hey, look, I can get you on ESPN Every Saturday, you can come play in Florida. There's nobody else here in our co- We can go win the conference, have a locked ticket to the college football playoff, put you on the national stage, and try to win a national championship. Gus Malzahn has it as easy as anybody in the Big 12 from a recruiting standpoint. I think UCF scary moving forward. Could you see a scenario, back to conference realignment specifically, yep. where the ACC and the Big 12 kind of join forces? And not just like we invite these four teams, more like right. they, they merge uh, it's as likely as the super conference happening. And I, it's tough to say there's a number less than zero, but I wish there was <laughs> to quantify this. There is no way. And maybe, maybe two years ago, you know, when the big 12 was truly desperate, but we're in an era now where Brett, your marks, the aggressor, if given the opportunity to either merge with a conference that we've seen has had either leadership issues currently or in the past that are enough to have the foundation of that league be so shaky, that it's going to fall apart. That's that's desperation. Right. Your mark feels as though, hey, I, I don't need Boston College. I, I don't need you know, we talk about the, the market. Oh, well, what about the Boston? Nope. Mm-mm. They're not profitable. I don't need Syracuse. I don't need Wake Forest. Why would we try to merge? Why would we create a, a 30 team Super League where we still got Cal and Stanford hanging out there and don't really know what to do with them? Yeah. Uh, your mark instead says, hey, these four teams are kind of in the middle zone here. I like Louisville. Let me take these guys and make us profitable, make us better. And no reason to try to save you, Jim Phillips, and wrap ourselves in what was supposed to be the greatest college basketball conference ever and ended up killing the league altogether. How much of a reduced rate would those teams have to come in at if if they oh. did merge? <laughs> Dude, it makes me it makes me think of like an SMU. You know, I yeah. and I love going back to the SMU topic because it seems like from their administrative standpoint, even the last two, three decades, things have just been so discombobulated in from a sports perspective. They said, hey, big middle finger to everybody in our conference. We're going to the ACC and we're gonna pay for it. And the day they get there, you're like bags packed. They show up at the front door of the university and the dean comes out and is like, yeah, we're being audited. I think they're going to close down the university. Uh, You know, how crazy is that? That SMU walks to the ACC and the second they get there, you talk about the conference falling apart altogether. So if that league is desperate enough that they would call SMU who is desperate enough to pay its way for a decade in their conference, you know, and, and now they're asking, Hey, could you maybe save this team or that team? Uh, if you're looking at a Boston college, the reduced rate would be 
unreal, unreal. It wouldn't make sense for that for that program. And the reason I keep bringing up Boston College is they are so far behind a Washington State who the Big 12 balked at yeah. or right in that region of Oregon State who the Big 12 balked at. So now Brett Yolmark is being very selective. And if you get a Louisville, hello. You know, they're an ESPN property that I believe the TV network would be able to work out with the conference. We can give them a full cut. For Syracuse, sorry. There's just no way. Yeah, it wouldn't make sense. Uh, Drake, where can people follow you? Where can they find your show? Locked on Big 12 at LOB12 on Twitter. Locked on Big 12 is wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Uh, it's kind of like Tiger in 05, uh, you know, it's like the when the U.S. beat the Russians in the Olympics. It's like your first kiss every day, though, in podcast form. It's just the beauty of life and sports at Locked on Big 12. Love it. Thank you, man, for joining me. I appreciate it. Dude, an absolute pleasure. This whole expansion stuff. I, I do want to, before I, we, we close it out, it sucks, right? Like I know that I I'm, I've made light a bit of of a Syracuse or a Wake Forest that really as one of their fans has got to suck to hear same it did for sure. for Washington State and Oregon State but then again you know in in this world of college football where money is king this has been happening to teams for decades and it it's part of the business I I think the the intrigue of of discussion of where we could go and where it could go for teams like Florida State or the ACC as a whole I I hope the best for you but. Oof. In capitalism, in business, it just doesn't look, it looks bleak for some of these squads. And I'm sorry, it's it's a tough subject, but I'm glad we could talk about it together. Yeah, it is brutal. And uh, yeah. yeah, don't try to make light of it. You know, understand that it would suck if you were in that situation. Oof. But, you know, you could always just, I don't I don't have any. Yeah, you know, you know it's like, oh, what do you do? <laughs> so, oh. Amy, I, I appreciate you a ton for, for coming on. Absolutely.